This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Sign up with the link in the description to get a huge discount. I like honey buns as much as the next guy. I'm not gonna gouge your eye out for one. As someone who does essentially write for a living, I have to appreciate that the script to a $200 million movie starts with honey bun and bubblicious discourse. Bubblicious watermelon wave. What do you say? There is no other kind. Portland Gentry. Okay, now I understand why he sticks with six. There's an upside to sleeping so close to your toilet. I get it, you're glib. This movie is quippy and I enjoy it, but I also genuinely appreciate that they address it. What's the catch? You work for us. We're gonna train you to kill bad guys. And since you've already killed one, it shouldn't be too difficult. Ah, catch that? They didn't just pick a murderer out of a hat. They picked one that killed a bad guy, even if six won't confirm that till later. Can't blame the Russos for finding a location card aesthetic they like and sticking with it. Ryan Gosling essentially looks the same as he did 18 years ago, so it makes sense that Six would too. The Duke of Hastings? Goodness, are there any unattractive people in the Gravers? There's a whole clangy, bangy motif in the score for this movie. It picks up for the title card after the lighthearted conversation between Six and Fitzroy and turns the tone much more ominous. And it's been coming in and out during this first kill. The constant fireworks muffled in the distance make it unclear if the sound is diegetic or added, and it makes this whole scene feel surreal. Got you. <laughs> I love that he doesn't even bother to give a believable excuse. What are you gonna do, Doc is pay? This is where I was in. His smooth movements never stops moving forwards towards his target, the muffled sound on his first two kills, and it's not until he breaks a bottle which would make noise that the sound in the film turns up. The first of many drone shots. Honestly, stoked to see this tech getting used in this way. Paloma's back. I'm glad Ana de Armas decided to continue in this direction. She can genuinely throw down. Oof, brutal and awesome human shield move by four. Love how you can tell they were cut from the same cloth in these simple moments. Respect and hatred. Oh, firework to the face? Brutal, resourceful, but brutal. It's right. Same as you. They even show the gum. I guess that was Fitz's move. Honestly, it would've worked on me. Take this and bring the bastard down. This is pretty noble. I think I'd just be like, well, you killed me, so screw you, you handsome jerk. You give him hell, Six. Again, lots of support for the dude who killed you. Maybe Four should get his own movie? Cal Mulvey is part of the DCEU, the MCU. Maybe it's his time. I heard you. Just chose to ignore you. Ha, <laughs> got him. Who was he? A bad guy. Carrying bad sh I love that these two already hate each other and aren't even trying to hide the fact that they both know the other one is coming for them. Six doesn't even answer the question. Did he have anything on his person that you like to give to me? Last chance, Six. Understood. There's something so satisfying about signature looks, like the Terminator's original look, just being the protagonist stumbling onto a random person and taking their clothes. Max is fireplace and barbecue. Max? There is no Max. So it's like you do the max? Yeah. Why didn't you just say that in the first place? Because if something went wrong, I couldn't blame Max. <laughs> Truly amazing code word. Co code words? Code phrases? Set up and punchline? Either way, amazing. It's a movie with many a mustache, but let's not sleep on Billy Bob's here. Truly a beaut. Beats being on the wrong side of the bars. Oof, it's better than prison is a pretty low bar. Still, that's sort of a thank you, I think. Never should have touched Fitzroy's guys. They're all criminals! Takes one to know one. Lloyd Hansen is a sociopath. Yeah, like it's a bad thing. Bad for you, good for us. He has methods. He does. <laughs> Can't beat a psychopath in that fit called Lloyd. Mostly it's loss, which teaches us about the worth of things. <laughs> That's Arthur Schopenhauer. He's a German philosopher. He saw the value in <laughs> suffering. Sure, Harvard, but I like the idea that Lloyd just really loves True Detective and got into pessimism and now is even more insufferable because he thinks he's Rust Cole. You watch the game on Saturday? I turned it off at halftime. Well, no one goes to Harvard to play football. You did. I like to be the exception. This is a great intro to Lloyd. He's been called a sociopath and he's literally torturing a guy in another country to get around US laws. Hmm, stranger than fiction, but he and Carmichael start with a chill convo about their alma mater's football team. And while it's sort of done to show how unhinged Lloyd is, I think it also shows more about Carmichael. He's comfortable kicking it with someone he agrees is a violent sociopath, so yeah, he's a, he's a bad guy. I'm sending Suzanne to assist. I'd rather you punch me in the dick. I will gladly punch you in the dick, Lloyd. Missed opportunity there, Bugs. I guess shooting him in the chest is cool too. You could, you could do that. Find somebody he loves and squeeze. Okie dokie, Kittredge. Holy crap, he drove 450 miles on a tuk-tuk? He really is special. Would've gotten there faster on tuk-tuk. <laughs> well, now you die. Need anything? Just a nap. Relatable. 
Great time to talk about the stellar costume design for Lloyd. The loafers, the tight high water pants, slicked back hair, these medium 50s polos, the mustache. I mean, I think on paper I hate everything about this fit, but also I wish I could rock it. Should I? I am I? You know what makes me sad, Don? Your small hands. <laughs> this delivery is maybe the best quip in a movie full of quips. But see, that's the beauty of the private sector. I don't care. Ah, the free market. Just make it painless. Aw, he cares. That's sweet. Solid nonverbal communication skills. But I like the idea that silence specifically could be a huge warning to Six. So much for painless. Nice detail with the flare smoke coming out of the hole in the plane. Death by parachute. The set piece just goes from bad to worse. Everything is so bananas. Seriously, so much for painless. Love the Mission Impossible music that kicks in as he regains his purpose. Where are you? Emotionally, I've been better. <laughs> Six never answers the question. You can give me the asset you stole, and I won't have to chop your head off. When you say things like chop your head off, it makes you sound untrustworthy. Okay, I was in after the first showcase of Six's skills, but it's these murderous goofballs bantering that kept me here. These two have great chemistry, and I'm really hoping Lloyd has a twin brother for the future. My assistant will get lunch. You like sushi? No, I'm good. I. Just had some Skittles. Hey, Lloyd. Yeah. I immediately don't like you. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. Double honesty. Don't say preternatural to me. Asshole word. <laughs> you were just quoting philosophy to the dude you were torturing. Lloyd, you're fascinating. It's no fugitive farmhouse outhouse henhouse moment, but it's a pretty solid we're coming for you montage. I mean, the entire thing screams Netflix movie in a way that I can't exactly explain, but I ain't complaining. That, that wasn't me complaining. Jude has that exact camera, and it's my channel, so that makes that camera a win. Do you mind? He plays it off like he likes the picture, but he's actually just getting rid of evidence of his existence. This is how you get an empty file. It's just all the outfits in this movie. How long they make you stay in bed for? Claire's the perfect age where kids start to recognize when certain adults aren't used to being around kids, so they mess with them. I love it. We don't chew gum in this house. That wasn't briefed. Where'd you get it? Prison? Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> Legit LOL at that head nod and walk away. Does he ever get to the top of the hill? Huh. I'll let you know. Nice of Six to save her from the Sisyphean nihilistic pessimism that he sees his life as. Is pessimism a theme for this movie? You feeling better? Kids can be just so tough despite the cards they're dealt. I mean, she's metal. And I love this line. Just another Thursday. What a dude. He stays so calm and doesn't alarm them about what to him is obviously about to happen. Amazing how long a 12 second long take is when it's hand to hand combat. Oh man, this pulled back shot with the dulled music and the flashlight bouncing around. You sure you're all right? It's just another Thursday. Oof, great callback. Also, the actual meaning of that hitting her is great. This is what he does. The needle drops here are really something. Silver bird and now this chit chat polka? The Russos are really going for weird and it's working. You really are the uh, full buffet. Gosling's expressions. But truer words have never been spoken of Ryan Gosling. Case in point, Ryan Gosling's workout routine. Goodness gracious, what have you been doing? You cleaned up very well. I mean, I know Laszlo is just buttering up Six to try to relax him so he can trap him, but again, he ain't wrong. Juan Pablo is also a very common name in Ecuador. I knew it, I never give up hope. Escobar's alive and making thick passports in Vienna. Emotional memory has stained. Love it. Love that he's monologuing so we don't trust him already, but an actual trap door? This movie is doing the most. Trap door. Unexpected. Right? See? Six gets it. This movie is fun. They don't usually come this attractive. Let's call it harassment. Maybe that's harassment. Buckle up. Ah, so he's evil and a creep. Another one that could use a punch in the chest? Is, is that where we landed? This time-lapse inventory my gear shot and the almost Edgar Wright quick cuts here are visual flourishes that we don't often get in this type of movie. Who's the closest to you? We are. The slow eye open is like super villain PhD stuff, and Chris Evans nails it in a way that you can tell he is having just the best time being a bad guy. Assets were chosen for their skill set, lack of family, nameless assassin with limited morality. I don't know what he's doing, but I'm digging this. He's a scary dude monologue while he builds whatever that Franken murder machine is. Remove yourself from my personal space, please. Good line. Stealing that for sure. Reading the text off your glasses is why she's an agent and you're you. But I love it. Goes by quick and they don't over explain it. 
stellar guy who thinks he's the coolest entrance. Not all defense contractors are former military, but imagine going through all that training, having all that experience, and rocking whatever kind of carbine this is, and then the handsomest dude you've ever seen kills you with half a pair of scissors. Rough day. Come on, man. Ooh, I love that Lloyd breaks the action movie man code and Six responds appropriately. Because of course he doesn't care. He just wants to win. He really is a bad guy. You must be Lloyd. What gave it away? The white pass, the trash dash. It just, it leans Lloyd. <laughs> trash dash. Solid burn. I got it here somewhere. It's hard to see. Is that it? This was also spoiled in the trailer, but what they didn't show was the setup. I love Six's Is That It swagger. Very Craig Bond, I've got an itch. But again, the banter. It's one of those moments that usually in a movie you'd say, no way would Lloyd stay long enough to drop that line, but I 100% believe he would because these two are constantly attempting to out too cool for school each other. I can't get enough. What's the issue with you? Why? You want my foot in your ass? Ah, shit! Lloyd is so annoyed. He's having a rough day. Who's this lunatic? Yeah. Lloyd. The line is quick and almost a throwaway, but the delivery here is on point. The way he's also exclusively focused on what he cares about, in this case, replacing his lost shoe. It's like an 11. It sounded like a question. I know some people are quipped out. I'm not. Ooh, those look just like my red wings. Lloyd is gonna be pissed. <laughs> the slides, too sore for loafers. Sometimes Lloyd needs to take care of Lloyd. Why are you walking like that? Cause I got shot in the ass, Suzanne! Yelling Suzanne will never not be funny. Let's watch it again. Suzanne! Hugging. Yeah, the drone shots are still working. I mean, is that a short sleeve sweater? Where do these boys shop and how do I get invited? Whatever I just did to your ears, it's not even torture. I just made it up on the spot. Just came to me. Love that he's so confident about it. Especially because if he is trained in combatives and interrogation techniques, which it's pretty clear he is, he was definitely taught that the ears are easy to manipulate and cause a lot of pain. He's just one of those guys that's like, yeah, I don't know if you know this, but I taught Dimebag how to shred. Just a reminder that despite what most movies show, torture doesn't work. The villains in this film, the CIA, lied about torture being critical in the info gathering about Bin Laden, but none of it was true. People will say anything to make the torture stop, and usually it's whatever the interrogator wants to hear. Who's in Prague? I already told you I don't know. But I'd be lying if I didn't say I'd love Lloyd's boring response every time. Boring. Ah! Boring. He knows all he has to do is threaten Claire, but he enjoys this. Might even say something about the mental state of people willing to torture? I mean, at least tell me you guys had some kind of exit strategy. We never got that far, kid. So there wasn't an exit strategy for Six, but there was for Cahill, because that's a dream apartment right there. Where is he? A trunk. Well played. <laughs> game, recognized game. You get in? No, I get in. No lies detected. Whatever they are paying you, it is not enough. I mean, this has got to be a dream gig for a pro like Alfre Woodard. What, two days, three tops, get to be a grizzled badass who's important to the plot and then gets to blow yourself up in a flaming ball of glory? And obviously self-sacrifice. Send everyone. Get them in there, every team. Light it up. Yep, this is why we're here. You know, good guy Greg, I mean six, gets arrested, saves dozens of lives. Well, that's terrifying. These shielded up mercs are right out of, I don't know, one of the cods, and I can tell you I already don't like this level. Genius writing here. This whole set piece is fantastic. Keeping six handcuffed to the bench. The entire time is so entertaining and turns what otherwise would be a fine shootout scene into something that feels totally bananas in the best possible way. Extra 10 million to the first guy to put a bullet in this Ken doll's brain. <laughs> How did anyone not enjoy this movie? Reloads with the gun between his knees and racks the slide with Lloyd's red wing? That's a John Wick noise. Well, get it back on before I beat you to death with that keyboard. As the movie goes on, you start to realize that all of Lloyd's animated dialogue really isn't hyperbole. I believe he'll actually beat that guy to death with his keyboard and like smile the entire time. Anna solo to the rescue. I love when they set up a goon as if he'll be an issue for our hero and he just dodges a few times and Aikido's him out the window. Always love a good shot through the roof scene. Reminds me of sneakers. Oh yeah, now that's a no look. Well, he was looking, but that's a through the roof shot. Awesome. This is bazonkers. Full on Tomorrow War blockbuster pizza party sleepover vibes. Get me some Twizzlers. I finally get why they call him the gray man. Thanks. Thankfulness. Hello, my sexy Tamil friend. He's not wrong. I mean, his, his pronunciation is wrong, but he's not wrong. You hurt? I mean, my ego's a little bruised. I would like the opportunity to save you at some point. <laughs> Gender equality. Okay, now we're talking. Through the parking lot, into the building, and then a seamless handoff to a steady cam. 
Oof, they sell how dangerous Lone Wolf is so easily and so quickly. Just look at his entrance. And I mean, nobody is surprised by this, but Danush is wearing the heck out of that suit. Not everybody can pull off that print pattern. <laughs> Brutal, he pulled him right into a headbutt. Well, this is plain awesome. Also loving this music. And speaking of building this guy up as a huge threat, I thought I noticed his speed seemed enhanced, and it is. They're literally cutting frames out of the fight to make it seem like he's almost teleporting. Freaking love it. And yeah, he's kicking their butts after just getting defibrillated, but they've been through some stuff, so they get a pass. You gave me an empty gun? The shells were coming, okay? Huh? The shells were coming. <laughs> he does try to get her the shells. No one throws a loaded weapon, okay? Again, there are shots that are like, look at our amazing drone pilot, and then there are these shots used perfectly to connect the two characters with quick geography and add to the motion and fluidity of the action sequence. Good news is he missed the liver and the kidney. Yeah, but sure. Sassy Gaz. Although with how his art goes, I wouldn't be surprised if Danush missed on purpose. Maybe a team up in the Gray Man 2, Gray a tad harder? It was clear it was either gonna be my brother or him. I decided it would be him. In hindsight, I think it's a feature, not a bug, that Sierra 4 helps Six with his dying act. These guys aren't just criminals. They were vetted and shown to be good dudes with unlucky streaks. Based on Cahill's line, it seems like that was the purpose of the program. Thanks for proving us right. You look like you've been hit by a bus, but it only adds to your mystique. Again, you're not wrong, but coming from you, Lloyd, it feels racist. Anyway, Danush has a beautiful beard. So what do you say? We gonna do this or not? About dang time, these two are perfect humans. How is it taking so long to, oh, he, he means go save Claire. Got a chirp, that's, that's cool too. If you're gonna take his gun, make sure he's loaded. <laughs> Danny Byrne. You wanna make an omelet? You gotta kill some people. Nailed it, no notes. More like Anna to arm her, <laughs> am I right? I mean, she's legit dodging bullets. Love a storm in the compound buildup. Solid hero wink right there. Well, it seems like he's genuinely having a good time. And again, there's something about this medium polo and BNT APC9 that just works. MORONS! <laughs> and seriously, Evans is still having the best time in it shows. <laughs> Underrated portion of this movie, Six's grunts. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Alfre Woodard, Billy Bob gets to go out like a boss. He even got to throw Lloyd's line back at him. Or self-sacrifice. Also love the very uncharacter move by Lloyd to throw his goon in front of the blast. Choke out tug of war over a table is such a cool idea for a fight scene set piece. So if Avik is gonna give Miranda the drive at the end, why fight her at all? Well, Miranda and Six are laying waste to essentially everything and everyone they see. Even if the lone wolf is planning to give her the drive, he has no reason to believe she won't just shoot him the second she sees him. He needs to get the upper hand to prove his intentions before he gives it to her. Take it. Also, noise. see you in the sequel. That's some Tom Cruise speed right there, leading to another fun little camera flip flourish. Dang, rough injury. He's like a meaner, less honorable, less handsome John Tavner. That's right, less handsome. I said what I said. He's got Dennis beat, I suppose. I mean, I'm having a blast. Again, I pretty much believe him. If your strategy relies on whether or not I'll kill a child, you need a new strategy. Well, at least he knows himself, but also he did. Nobody throws a loaded gun, Lloyd. Nice callback. Six is all with that firearm safety. Forget the shot. Come get the kid. Just like Jack Reacher, who promised to drink Jai Courtney's blood from a boot, Six could have walked away and let Miranda take Lloyd out, but turns out he's just as petty as the mustache. They really are perfect for each other. I mean, he did burn Claire's face. Can't say I'd keep my composure either. This is just another Thursday. Hey, a boy is wicked smooth. And like, it for real is. Lloyd may be a tough guy who takes cheap shots, but he's not even the baddest baddie Six has fought in this movie. Six's confidence is not misplaced. But you have been a pebble in my shoe since the very beginning. Ha, <laughs> he had literal pebbles in his shoe. Not even his cap punch works on six. Yeah! That stings! Lloyd's having a rough day. Uh, oh, brutal. Let's see if these moves. Is, is that a saying? Do people say that? Because I feel like I definitely need to use it now. Yeah, okay, I still think Lloyd's arrogance is just another example of his character flaws and propensity to fail upwards, but that was a sweet move. Uh, hey, missed one. Lloyd Hansen was a toxic piece of shit, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Agreement. Does this plan involve me living? Yes, yeah, you're gonna live. And we should go. A lot of blood. Even on the way out, our boy has jokes. A lot of blood. And six is metal. This will forever be remembered as one of the darker chapters in the history of this agency. Oh, uh, what? Agency? The CIA? <laughs> Oh, holy 
Holy crap, Joe Russo thinks this is one of the worst things the CIA has done. Oh man, the clips in this film are amazing. This committee and myself have decided to exonerate the three of you in this affair. Ah, there it is, back to realism. Remove yourself from my personal space. They are killing it with the callbacks in this movie. Oh, sh It's like you guys have never even met Six. Am I allowed to chew gum in here? And one final callback. More hugging. I know killing is bad and Six should stop killing everyone, but I love that he comes back for her. It gives this feeling like it was just no other choice for him. Good guy, Gentry. Well, that was fun. An exciting low-budget action flick that Netflix... What's that? 200 million. Huh. Okay, it should be pretty clear that I really enjoyed this movie, so let's get the criticisms out of the way. First off, and this is honestly my biggest gripe, but it's called The Gray Man, which is the concept of blending into the environment around you, so from the jump, casting a top five of all time agreed upon hottie as The Gray Man is a choice. It's a choice. Nice suit, subtle. You know, fly on the wall yourself. I mean, from an advertising perspective, yeah, obviously go for Goss, but it's just funny that the guy who was literally cast as Ken in the Barbie movie is also supposed to somehow blend in with us normies. Nice try, handsome. Also, a lot of the movie is unrealistic at times. It's not really a super valid criticism because I honestly can't imagine watching the trailer and expecting anything different, but I can understand that more absurd moments take some people out of it, and while that didn't really happen for me in this movie, it always bums me out when it happens. So I feel your pain. But hopefully even for you, you can find the fun, because for real, this movie is so fun. First off, just generally always love a spy spec ops movie. There have been a few movies and shows that have come out recently, but so many of them just aren't fun. Not the case here. From the jump, Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans are clearly having a great time. Besides the nice guys and crazy stupid love, Gosling doesn't get many chances to show off his comedic chops. Well, now I'm upset with them. So hopefully this helps change that. Oh, and that one papyrus sketch on SNL. And playing off Ana de Armas, they have great humorous sibling energy. I joked about them hooking up, but it's much better this way. And once again, Anna shines in an action role. She genuinely throws down and has the real acting chops when they're needed. And then there's the suited up stooges. Alfrey and Billy Bob did the most with their small roles on the good guy's side and brought some gravitas to the project. And then Reggae Jean Page and Jessica Henwick nail it on the CIA bad guy's side. Page's overconfident jerk is a backbone of the film's villainy, and Henwick's self-preserving corrupt turn that seemingly even throws Carmichael for a loop at the end was a great move that makes me excited to see what she does in the franchise's future. Also, like, let her fight? She's a weird cast to not have her fight. I'm assuming it's being saved for the sequel, but even if you hated Iron Fist, she was a highlight. Then there's our dear, honorable Captain Rogers. For a lot of us, Scott Pilgrim was when we knew Evans could be a jerk, but post-MCU, Knives Out taught us that he could do way more than be America's ass. And one could argue that in this film, he's doing his best US agent impersonation. But dang, do I love it. Obviously, I mentioned the look, but it bears mentioning. It's so specific, and it tells us everything we need to know. But instead, Evans turns it up to 11 and just has a blast being the ultimate douche. I mean, he is the worst, and it makes everything he does immensely watchable. And while he kind of looks like a high school bully all grown up, it's a refreshing and unique vibe for a badass villain. I'm actually surprised that killed him. Whoever's playing the fighty bad guy in the next one has big loafers to fill. Like I said, twin? Floyd Hansen? Although, hear me out, Thor. With Chris Hemsworth as the bad guy, you can play on the pretty and mean baddie, but then at the beginning of the final act, Six and Thor team up with the noose and they all go kill Carmichael and Suzanne. Could be a fun showdown. Sometimes movies can change your perspective on issues, culture, existence. They move you to tears or fill you with anger, and then other times they are a bunch of crazy hot people blowing crap up and punching each other, and that's great too. So, this movie may go to Blu-ray at some point, Netflix movies often do, but there's another service out there, not sure if you've heard about it, HBO Max, that's currently removing a bunch of movies and shows, ones that may never get physical copies. So that leaves very few options if you ever want to see these pieces of media again. On a completely unrelated note, you should sign up for NordVPN with my link, nordvpn.com slash cinemawins. You must know by now that if you want to do anything privately, like actually private where you don't get letters from your internet service provider, you need NordVPN. They allow you to use their servers and that way you're completely anonymous and they never store your data. And it's really easy and super fast. I use it pretty much every day on both my PCs and my phone. And with 59 different countries to choose from, you can access games, movies, and shows that are region locked. Sometimes you can even get a lower price just by changing your virtual location. You can also get around bandwidth throttling since all your traffic is encrypted. So thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Go to my URL to get a two year plan plus one additional month a huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Great service that I highly recommend, and it's a great help to my channel. Does the old man know about this? Not yet. Heads of roll. Have you heard from the old man? No, not yet. Doesn't mean he doesn't know. Pro no. The last person that pissed off the old man ended up floating in the Potomac. If you like breathing, you might want to fix this.